are the first independent intelligence agency. Preserving peace and protecting life. Welcome to the club. All right, you guys, I have to start off by saying that your two characters were my absolute favorite to watch in this film. Uh, what trait about Shola did you love the most? For my character to befriend um, uh, the Duke of Oxford in Africa uh, in a time that's um, obviously a, a tragic time. Uh, obviously, uh, Matthew was smart in using uh, history as a backdrop in telling this story. So Shola came all the way. He witnessed uh, a, a, a dramatic execution of uh, the Duke of Oxford's wife. Uh, I would think that that organically led him to want to be a right hand to um, the Duke of Oxford. And Reese, it's been said about Rasputin that when he walked into a room, all eyes were on him. I mean, I think, you know, Rasputin in the real world is a character that has so much mystery and um, rumor and gossip. And, you know, he's this figure that looms large over of, over Russia then and even still today. You know, he, he kind of stands out when you when you look at that period in history. Everyone seems to have the same haircut, except for Rasputin, you know? He kind of looks, wow, like he's in, like he works in the worst wellness clinic that's ever, that's ever been invented, you know what I mean? Demo, I loved your character because, you know, this, this storyline does take place in a time where men kind of dominated the world, but your character was so strong and was kind of, you know, running the shots. Um, I'm curious, you're, you know, your character wasn't based on a real life figure, but did you draw any inspiration from a woman back in that time? Yeah, I mean, she, I guess, you know, during World War II, so slightly later, there was um, a kind of famous group of women uh, that cracked some of the codes which saved basically everybody in World War II. I guess, you know, she was sort of inspired a bit by those women, these kind of you know, super brainy, um, undercover women, kind of nerdy. I think Matthew Vaughan um, had a nanny when he was growing up that mm. was very similar to Polly. So I think he drew from her when writing. Harris, your, your character Conrad, he is in no man's land and he is carrying someone on his back. Meanwhile, all of these explosives are going off. How difficult was it to film that scene? That was one of the most insane things I've ever done. I don't know, I guess I just thought, sort of thought because it's film and because it's um, it's not real that I wouldn't, wouldn't be doing it for real like that, but I was actually carrying him for a bit and there was shrapnel coming up and it was, I really didn't even, I didn't have to act. I was really just reacting to everything. Gemma, while I imagine that scene wasn't that fun to shoot for you, it was epic. Can you walk us through what that was like filming that particular scene where there was cheese explosions happening? I remember when I read the script, I was like, cheese? The guys that were doing the SFX could not wait to do it. Yay, we get to like throw Ambrosia Devonshire custard all over Gemma, which is what it was, it was custard. And we had like one shot at it and they just, all of a sudden it just went all over the place. It was rigged up, like it just went everywhere. Um, and speaking oh, of those shots, you know, Matthew Vaughn is so intricate in his transitions. I wonder as an actor, what it's like on set when he wants those particular transitions or specific shots. Yeah, I mean, he has it so in his head and that was something actually that I was so grateful for because the script was very, very dense. And there's a lot of stuff going on. There's all this, all these crazy stunts, but then at the same time, all this historical stuff and this familial drama. And, and so there are big tonal shifts. And he had, in his mind, he knew what he wanted it to be. The world burns. You have no idea of what men are capable of. We must do something. I know you want to fight. But there are other ways of doing your duty. You're going to need a suit. <laughs> Come on. We have to talk about the epic fight, of course. Can you walk us through the process of what it took to create those scenes and make them look so magical and beautiful? So it was tough going, you know, and we got yeah. super fit. And of course, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and lie. We had the help of the most uh, incredible uh, stunt yeah. team, led, led by the, the, the amazing Brad Allen, who we sadly lost last year. And, and uh, two, um, 
Georgian dancers were flown yes. in also. Because Matthew, we, we were training and, and toying around with finding a physical language for, for Rasputin for weeks, almost months, you know. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't arrive at something. And then one day, Matthew, which is why he is a genius, you know, just stormed into the stunt rehearsal and said, said I've got it! <laughs> We've got a mix Russian dancing with martial arts. When I watch this fight, it, it makes me, I want to cry because that ain't me, guys. It's beautiful, hands down, my favorite scene. I actually, I'm obsessed with period pieces. And if I was ever on the set, I would want to take some kind of wardrobe or trinket, something. Was there anything that you guys wanted or is there anything that you guys actually took home from set? Well, touchy subject. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> What happened? Was, well, we just didn't, we didn't get anything, really. Oh, I mean, <laughs> he didn't get anything. <laughs> I loved the film. It was so fun, so entertaining. Thank you guys so much for chatting with me today. And I can't wait for everybody to see this film in the theaters on the big screen.